will speak wisdom amongst them that are mature. So they can understand the objectivity of truth from the subjectivity of our sentimental attachments. That's why God can pick one man, send him to a land to take that land, and you'll find out 10,000 others. You say, why is God not choosing them? When it comes to kingdom, the equation is not predicated on love. It's predicated on maturity. So a child understands the finished works of Christ. He knows that according to divine justice, the wrath of God was atoned for by the mercy of God, the grace of God, and the love of God. So he holds on to the love of God. He holds on to the mercy of God, and that's beautiful. And then you come to many conferences, we are only teaching about the love of God and the mercy of God. But we don't teach people to take responsibility that there is a place in God where love, mercy, and grace is not only meant for provision, but it's also meant for empowerment to advance kingdom. That's the realm of sons. So when you grow from the realm of a child, you become a son. Who is a son? A son is one that bears the image of the father. He bears it. He has interacted with the father until when you look at him, is the father you see. He's an expression of the heartbeat of the father. It's an expression of the bodings of the father. It's an expression of the character of the father. So in 1 John chapter 2, verse 12 to 14, he said, I write unto you, children, because your sins are forgiven for his namesake. But when he came to sons, he said, I write unto you, young men, because you are strong. The word of the Lord abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, young men, because you are strong. The word of the Lord abides in you. You have overcome the wicked one. That's the credential of sons. They are strong. What is the strength of the son? The strength of the son is not natural. That's what I began to teach yesterday. The strength of the son is not physical. The son has found something in God that energizes him to do the will of God. The strength of the son is crystallized by his intimate walk with the father. So a point comes when he learns how to move from himself into God and he lives from God into himself. He steps out of himself, he takes of God and he lives by God. There are many Christians that have not gotten there. It took Abraham 25 years to tap into the strength of God. There are three energy levels as you walk with God. And there are a lot of scriptural references that typifies it. Like the courts. The courts of God are in three levels. The outer court, the inner court, the holy of holies. If you study the gifts of the spirit, they are split into three. The first two gifts of the spirit is separated by Hecteros. The next, the next five and then the next two. But I don't have time to talk that. But if there are three energy levels in God. The first energy level in God is called Endunamo. I'm telling you how we win in this life. How we win. Because if you are still functioning by your natural energy, there's a place you will break. So sons have learned how to step out of their natural ability. Your creativity is good. Your eloquence is good. Your beauty is good. Your human connection is good. But if God doesn't alight upon it, there is a point where it will break. Because somebody will have more than you. So a son, by all means, step out of all that he has. And he, he cleaves to all that God has. And then he begins to journey from the energies of God. He said, I write unto you, young men, because you are strong. The way they enter into this strength is deliberate. The first energy level of God is called Endunamo. The second energy level of God is called Elutero. The third energy level of God is called Metamorpho. And I will explain it to you. In Romans chapter 4 verse 21, the Bible said, Abraham staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. He was strong in faith, giving thanks to God. The word strong there is the word Endunamo. So that energy of God, what it does is that it gives you power over your natural circumstances. When you tap into Endunamo, nothing circumstantial breaks you. So everything the devil throws at you, you rule over it. The devil can bring people gossiping. When people are gossiping about you, 
When you are a child, you go and cry. <laughs> I'm heartbroken. Who is heartbroken? When you look at them, you say, God help you. I don't have that time. You are functioning from another realm. They can come to your house and drop charm at your door. When you know Endunamo, you will step on that charm and you will walk away. And the person will check because they say, after four days, it should fall down. On the seventh day, you are celebrating your birthday. And then they say, what is happening? It's called Endunamo. That's what Paul carried when he was beaten by a viper. They say, oh, this is a hideous man. Even though he escaped the sea, his fate has caught up with him. Paul heard them. He removed the viper, threw it in the fire, and he started talking. When they walked for a while and Paul didn't die, they said, this is a God. They were right. Because he's functioning with the energy of God. But the way you enter into Namo is fourfold. First, he said, Abraham did not consider his body dead, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. That's one. So people who walk in the Dunamu, they are able to look away from their circumstance. So the circumstance can be loud, but they are able to turn away. The devil wants to get their attention. They refuse to give the devil attention. The devil becomes strong to the degree you give him attention. So when things are happening, the devil expects them to look. When they are troubled, the devil expects them to look. But the son knows. He said, be anxious for nothing. By all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known. So instead of the guy looking at the circumstance, he goes to God. After a while, he will leap from earth and enter heaven. So everything they are doing doesn't matter. And when he comes back, those things become most. Are too small for him to consider he has migrated he said abraham considered not that's the first protocol of endunamo the second protocol of endunamo is that he staggered not at the promises of god through unbelief so i may be there i'm 35 years i'm not yet married and the devil expects me to stagger but he said none shall lack her mate so i hold on to that i may be sick for a while and then the devil wants me to die then he said if that same spirit that raised up jesus from the dead lives in me he will quicken my mortal body i may not have money for a moment but he said he made him that was rich to become poor so that they through him might become rich so everything the devil throws at abraham abraham did not stagger you refuse to stagger you stand on the word of god that's the second protocol of entunamu what you don't know is that you are entering energy you are entering energy you refuse to consider and then you hold on to the promises of god and the third thing is that abraham he said he was giving thanks to god so even though i prayed and the answer have not yet come the answer have not yet come i come to god and i said i have a very big god who is always by my side a very big god so you think i'm foolish i am building energy I'm building energy. I'm building energy. So when I continue like that, a point come. The fourth thing is in Dunamu. When God sees that God can't deny himself, that's when God steps out. And when God steps out, suddenly, suddenly, you know there is always a suddenly. He says that when the upper room pray, suddenly something blows. And all of a sudden, the things that look like mountains, you will look at them and there will be no more. Why? Why? He said that when Israel came out of Israel, the land of captivity, he said the sea saw them and fled. Jordan went back and he said, Oh sea, why fledest thou? Oh Jordan, why goest thou backward? And the earth itself was reasonable. He said, let the earth tremble at the presence of God. Let the earth, when God rises, everything goes down when god steps up everything bows even the mountain can skip the sea can go back it will go against his protocol the reason is because endonamo has come endonamo that's the way of song they labor to tap into that energy and when they find it oh when they find it they become lords over circumstances so the guy can go anywhere if he goes to a wilderness it will become a fruitful field Abraham was like that because he found and dunamo. He said in Isaiah 51, he said, Hacking unto me, oh ye that love righteousness. He said, Look up.